<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Cast from the Crypt, the podcast all about tales from the crypt and other fun horror things. I am your host, CJ Roby, and every week I watch an episode of Tales from the Crypt because as a child of the 90s, I was way too scared of it back then to actually watch it. So now I'm going through them and given, given, my, given my thoughts as a, as a horror aficionado in my almost 30s and not being a horror aficionado at all. This week, we are watching episode four of Tales from the Crypt, Only Sin Deep. Look, there's, there's not a lot to talk about in this episode. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward episode. A woman melts. That's, that's, really, that's really what goes down in the episode itself. We're not here to talk about this episode of Tales from the Crypt, even though that is entirely what the show is about. No, 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 friends. We are here to talk about a little tiny little company that uh, you all might know called the Home Box Office. That's what we're here to talk about today. But before we do that, do want to go into a little bit about this episode just a little bit all right we're we're just going to we're going to keep the structure of the show pretty much the same you know i can't just i can't just throw the whole show outline out the window because i'm excited all right there are guidelines that have to be followed in podcast land we're going to start off with top 5 credits of this episode number five we're gonna start off with brett cullen brett cullen is one of the one of the actors uh, in the episode he is the rich guy who ends up marrying uh who ends up marrying our main character and he is actually he's he's done a bunch of stuff but most recently he was Thomas Wayne in Joker. Yeah, that's right. He was... Oh, hold on. Sorry. Spoiler alert for the super... Okay, it wasn't sh- It wasn't super shitty, but I didn't really have a great... I really have a great uh, time with it. But yeah, Brett Cullen plays Joker's fucking dad. Number four is Back to the Future with our main character, Leah Thompson... Leah Thompson was uh, Marty's mom in Back to the Future. That's probably, I mean, you might know her from a, a few things, but that's probably like the number one thing that pops out in your mind when you see her in this episode is, oh, that's that's Marty's mom. And I could totally understand why he would want to fuck her in, in two. Well, I mean, he doesn't want to fuck. She's trying to fuck in two, but he's, no, you're my mom. But... <laughs> Number three credit is Seth Flaum, the Flom Flaum. I don't know Seth Flaum, the editor on this episode, who is also the editor of Joanna Man, which <laughs> is a hilarious movie. Who knows? In 2019, people might be like, "Ah, uh, oh my goodness, Joanna Man! I can't believe that you like that movie. So outdated." But you know what? It was hilarious when it was coming out. But you know what? Listen, listen. If you're if you got a problem with that, he also did Zombievers, which was which was my second choice for putting him on here because Zombievers is complete nonsense. But you know what? I I just love Joanna Man too much. Credit 2, credit number 2 is Craig Clark. And Craig Clark was the sound editor for this episode, who also did ADR for one of my favorite movies, just seriously one of my hands-down favorite movies, Army of Darkness. That's right, Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness. Such a hilarious and just just such a crazy movie. I love it. I love Bruce Campbell. I love Sam Raimi. I love everything about it. So good. Army of Darkness. Uh, I actually... I actually used that to uh, 
to kind of screen for my friends at a birthday party a long, long time ago. Good, real good times with Army of Darkness. And finally, our number one credit for this episode is Joseph P. Mercutio, our sound effects designer for this episode, who also, no, not sound effects, sorry, our special effects designer for this episode, who also did the special effects for goddamn Turtles in Time, y'all. This dude was the special effects guy for Ninja Turtles, tur- Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time. He also did 2, Secret of the Ooze. And, I mean, come on. Look, if you haven't seen any of the Ninja Turtles movies, just go back and watch them. You might as well. <laughs> like, just... Just smoke the fattest bowl that you can find. Get some green in your lungs and then get some green on the screen and you will have a fucking trip. Oh, man. The, those, those movies, I swear to God. just and, oh, and also look up, if you want some real ass horror, look up the degraded turtles costumes, like the animatronics that they're selling on eBay. Just pure nightmares. <laughs> it's, you gotta see these things. They're crazy. So that's the top five credits list. So let's get into let's get into the meat. Let's get into the meat of this episode. It ain't about Tales from the Crypt. I can tell you that. It's I mean, look, Tales of the Crypt will play a small role in it. Alright, I am still like I said, we can't just throw out the whole format. All right, I'm still going to talk about the episode. Leah Thompson's hot, then she's not, and then it's like, oh, shit. Oh, beauty's only skin deep. Ah. It, we're, we're talking about the home box office today, okay? That's what this episode is about. But we're going to get into that after a short break. So we will be right back with Cass on the Crypt. All right, back on the airwaves. Or should I say the scare waves? Mm, no, I should leave the puns to the Crypt Keeper. Anyway, we are talking about HBO. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, background about the home of Tales from the Crypt originally. Because I it, I, I felt it was, it was pretty interesting. HBO has a very long history of bringing people a lot of entertainment. So HBO, founded in 1965 by Charles Dolan, it was actually the first channel to use underground cables instead of, you know, telephone wires or because that's that's really all they had back then. What what microwave signals that that's how antennas work. You know, you can just throw a bag of popcorn right on top of your TV and it'll microwave it. It was supposed to be mostly for sports. It was kind of kind of uh, ESPN sort of deal uh, because, like at the time, there were, there were like weird rights issues about showing games on TV. They they wanted to like not have broadcasts in certain places, so that people had to go buy the games because you know that's the because that's what it's all for. It's for the love of sports. That's what it's all for. The first broadcast on HBO was an NHL game, uh, Rangers versus Canucks, at Madison Square Garden, and they also showed this movie. Uh, what is it? Sometimes a Great Notion with Henry Fonda and Paul Newman, and uh, the first. They were also the first uh, company to actually use satellites. It, they were the first ones to get satellite television because everyone was just like, oh, it's crazy expensive and like it doesn't even work. Like, what's satellites to shoot TV lasers into everyone's homes? That's impossible. They're ridiculous. And they took the chance. And the first satellite broadcast was actually the, the Thriller in Manila. Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier. Great fight. Man, God, that, such a... like. To, to be able to see that all over the world, ah, so crazy. So speaking of uh, satellites and TV lasers, 
I I got a story to tell you. And this story is definitely better than than the Crypt Keeper's fucking story about some hoe who was an asshole and got everything that she deserved. My story is about Captain Motherfucking Midnight. So on April 27th, 1986, John R. McDougal, that's two L's, that's the mistake that I made, uh, this dude was a, he was a tech at one of the satellite operating stations that actually like beams up the, you know, the, the channel network signal into the satellite so that it could actually like reflect to all the TV stuff. He hijacked the HBO signal for four minutes, for four and a half minutes, and broadcast a message to the entire East Coast that had HBO. And his man, it's it's a it's a real it's a real great story. And like this, this is a, this is the story of a hero. Okay, this is the story of a guy who was the very definition of punching up. This fool was punching way up into the fucking stars. This fool was punching. So he hijacks the Galaxy One satellite because the subscription prices were getting out of control for HBO. So back when back when they were first starting to do satellite when HBO put theirs up, what they also did was put that behind a paywall. And they were charging they were charging 12.95 a month to watch to watch HBO. But not only that, they were charging they were charging satellite people who used to be getting all the channels for free because they had built a satellite and it was able to intercept all of the uh all the channels and stuff, it could get all those signals. They started charging them by scrambling all of their channels so that no one could see it. So you would have to go buy a descrambler for your, for your satellite in order to even watch anything. And then you would have to pay the subscription to even watch, to even pick up those channels. And if you're using a satellite, sometimes it was even more for you because, hey, fuck you, you've got a satellite, you asshole. So that started, that like, satellites used to be selling all, all day. It was hot business. But then after that happened, they started declining and a bunch of businesses were shutting down and they were hurting. And one of those businesses belonged to John McDougal. So... This guy was born in Chicago in 61 and he was always he was always one of those CB radio guys. Back then it was they were like the real real nerds, the real basement dwellers were hanging out playing with CB radio and picking up like ham radio signals and talking to truckers and shit like that. These guys were like the proto nerds. Like they paved the way. <laughs> like all these guys are like you'll you'll see, but most of these guys are pretty successful now because they actually figured out how to do all that shit. So it pays to be a nerd. We see it time and time again. Uh, he studied management engineering, which I don't know what the fuck management engineering is. But then he uh, ended up getting into the satellite business. But because they were charging all the crazy high sub prices and like their the subscription prices, they were charging twelve ninety five for for a subscription to HBO, which is like in in twenty seventeen dollars, that is like thirty bucks. Like they were they were charging out the ass for HBO and. And like I said, if you had satellite, you had to pay. Uh, you had to pay for a decoder, a decryptor, and that was another like. De- oh, I'm, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at the number now. It was three hundred ninety-five dollars back then, and that says in twenty seventeen dollars, it'd be eight hundred eighty-two dollars and twenty-one cents, which is craziness. Come on, are you serious? So he was going out of business. This fool had to majorly downsize just to keep his whole life together. He had to he had to turn off his air conditioning just to be able to keep the lights on. And he ended up getting a second job 
over at the Central Florida Teleport, which does the like the signal for a bunch of the local stations and stuff like that. And, like, I feel it, man. I mean, I remember I had to shut down the air conditioning on my Twitch stream and start this podcast so I could get some free entertainment to pay for that free entertainment that I make. So, one day while he was at work, about a week before the whole thing goes on, he, he, uh, he's just, I guess he's just, like, been stewing for, for a while, and he's like, man, fucking HBO, like, making me pay for, pay for this broadcast, shit, I, I remember back in the day when it was free, and then now they're scrambling their networks, oh, I'll fucking show them, no, no, he, he definitely wasn't all, like, disgruntled like that, it was just, he just wanted to, he just wanted to protest, and you know what, good on him, good on him, so, about a week before that, he, uh, he tests it a little bit, sends up the, uh, the color bars, you know, the emergency signal with the beep, those little color bars. He puts that up, and nobody notices. So he's just like, well, well I guess I got it. I, I can get away with it. So he goes in the next day, and uh, everything's all normal. And he, after hours, he comes up with his little message, and he prepares to broadcast it to the world. Well, the... At, Actually, to anybody who has HBO and is on the East Coast. But still, that's a lot of people. That was half of HBO's whole subscriber base right there. He interrupts this movie, The Falcon and the Snowman, starring uh, Timothy Hutton, or the pod person that spawned Kevin Bacon and Benedict Cumberbatch. Like, look at that guy. And a young Sean Penn playing an old Haley Joel Osment. Like... <laughs> Uh, And the message reads, Good evening, HBO, from Captain Midnight. $12.95 a month? No way. Showtime movie channel, beware. And that that, that was on everybody's screens for four and a half minutes. And... It was it was immediately noticed by by the people who like controlled the satellite and they were just like, no, like we are going to shut this shit down if we don't know what's going on. Oh, by the way, uh Captain Midnight is uh he got the name not from the weird, like old timey World War One bomber radio show that somehow weirdly predicted Pearl Harbor, but he got it off of uh, a movie about a guy who does his own pirate radio out of the back of his van. So uh, HBO was just like, we're we're on it. Like we got a tech, and the tech tried to call the people who were in charge of the satellite, but he couldn't get a hold of them. So he was just like trying to solve it on his own. And both of them on like whatever I don't I don't know where they were, but they were they were both like increasing the power of both of their signals so that like either like the actual tv signal was trying to show but then he put his up and they kept doing this until they were just like oh shit we're gonna blow up this satellite if we if we keep fucking with it like this so after that he just he just bailed on the whole thing uh goes home and he's just like oh well it's over i i feel a little bad for doing it but you know what it's it's over and done with but no, it ain't done with. He wakes up the next day and sees, like, in the paper and on the news, they're just like, oh, who, who, hi- some, like, video terrorist hijacked HBO signal. Oh. And, like, yeah, people were calling him video terrorist. Uh, like, there was a, there was a certain executive who called him, a, yeah, a v- who called the, the whole thing video terrorism. <laughs> and, you know, you know what, I agree. I agree. What if what if I was just like on the side? What if this whole podcast was just like me being on the side of that exec? It was just like it was a terrorist. Yes, this this man fucking was malicious in telling us that we had to lower our prices so that people could enjoy our programming. Motherfucker. <laughs> no, uh, the, like I said, this guy is a this guy's a hero. Uh, so. They were, they were just like they were just like oh well we're looking for this guy the FCC scrambles an emergency meeting they were just like how are we gonna find this dude who the fuck is he 
and they get a bunch of phone calls just like, oh, yeah, no, it was t- it was totally me. I'm the Captain Midnight guy. And, you know, they're all just bullshitters. They uh, they actually they got a tip. They got a tip that they thought was pretty real from somebody saying that it was a station in Dallas, Fort Worth. But it it ended up with nothing. But they they did end up narrowing down where it could have been. So they were just like, okay, well, like it could either be like any of these 12 stations in the whole U.S. So they just sent people out and they were talking to everybody and they're just like, oh, yeah, this McDougal guy's got to be one of them. And they actually get uh, another phone call. They actually get another tip from from some. Oh, I hate this part of the story. Somebody snitches and they're just like, oh. I heard this guy talking about about jamming the signal of the satellite. He was talking on the phone, on a payphone, just like out where I was just being a tourist somewhere. So I wrote down his plates. And it's like, man, mind your own fucking business. God, what are you doing? Anyway, so he ends up turning himself into the police. They come and talk to him, and he's just like, yeah, it was, it was me. Like, I did it. So... The, his his court case is pretty quick. Uh, he he pleads. At first, he's he's going about it. He's just like, nah, like I didn't do shit. Like, no, no one's saying nothing about anything that I did. But eventually, he's just like, okay, yeah, like I don't want to lie in court. So you know, it's not it's not worth it. So he pleads guilty to illegally operating a satellite uplink transmitter. That was what he was officially charged with. And he was fined 5K and put on probation for a year. Uh, so, you know, after that, people were people were talking. It was it was big news for a little bit, and people were just like, "Oh, like <laughs> somebody." Uh, there was an article written that was just like, "Oh, well, like that was that was fun and like harmless and all, but like actual spies could get into our signals and like do whatever and blah blah blah." Uh, but at the time. You could easily look up all of the signals for all these satellites and stuff in magazines. Like, there were magazines that would just have all of them out there that you could just, like, oh, yeah, cool. This this one's at this longitude and latitude, and it's on this frequency. Yep, let me just spy it up real quick. Like, come on. It's not like it was secret knowledge. So, this led to, this led to a couple things. This led to the Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986, which made it a, a felony to do what he did because the laws were pretty lax about it at the time. It was pretty much, it was barely even a misdemeanor. And also the Automatic Transmitter Identification Device was created in order to put a, like a barcode or on all the transmitters, like a tag so that you knew at every moment which uh which transmitters are doing what receivers on what networks and stuff like that so after that uh there's there's like a couple more instances of these uh the most notable one really there was never any like large scale like fucking sci-fi like do not adjust your tv sets like that's that's never happened not to my knowledge i don't know uh but the, the uh, another one that did happen was this guy <laughs> in some weird ass mask with sunglasses uh just spouting a bunch of nonsense and then pulling his pants down and having some chick like slap his ass with a fly swatter it's it's <laughs> like the the first guy I, the first guy he was noble in his shit all right even even afterwards like they uh, he he only got like a, a year of probation you know he's still out there doing shit he's he's running a successful business he's a ceo of mcdougal electronics like he's got it he's got it on lock he knows how to hijack a satellite he knows how to do anything with electronics like he's he's got it but he he was railing against asshole companies being being douchebag business people like you know like he was he was doing it for the people this this was just just to, just to be an asshole this was just trolling and it was it was probably one of the greats one of the true great trolls so we we you know what we salute both of them 
<laughs> here at here at Cast in the Crypt, we salute both of them. All right. So now let's uh let's get into the actual episode itself. We got we got a couple minutes. We got 3 minutes technically, but you know what? We're going to let it ride. It's my podcast. I don't care. All right. So this episode this episode only sin deep released June 14th, 1989. It's about a hooker who no, no, sorry. It's 2019. I'll be respectful. A sex worker in the hooker department loses her beauty after she sells it to a voodoo pawn shop. Yeah, it's just uh, it's <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward episode. That's why like I I kind of front loaded it. Well, I mean, I didn't even front load it. It's the entire episode. But it's there's there's really not much to the episode other than Leah Thompson being hot and then not being hot at all. So well, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run down the episode real quick. It starts with Leah Thompson just kind of like walking down the street, you know, working the streets, just like, oh hey, what's up? You want a date tonight? Ugh. And uh, it establishes early that she's just all into herself and obsessed with her beauty because she looks at the in the mirror in like a random kiosk's mirror and she's like doing her face and her friend shows up and she's like oh why are you always looking at yourself and she's you know so this pimp shows up and uh you know he's he's just the stereotypical pimp and he's just like oh bitch where's my money like oh hey you got what about you you want to work for me i can i can hook you up girl treats you right she's like man fuck off like i'm not having any of your shit so he's just like oh fuck you bitch like that attitude will get you slapped and then her friend is like, yeah, that attitude will get you slapped. What do you think? What do you think? You're too good for us? She's like, yeah, I am too good for you. I should be at that fancy ass party across the street. And they're looking across the street and this fancy fucking shit's going on. And some dude comes out. Some rich guy comes out in a limo. And uh, her and her friend are talking. And she's just like, oh, you can't, you can't get him. She's like, oh, yeah, watch me. I can get anybody that I want. So... She the so Leah Thompson goes back to the to the pimp and she's just like, oh, yeah, like, what's up? Come on, baby. Like, I'll I'll fucking work for you. But then takes him to a back alley and robs him, lifting all of his shit off of him. And he goes for the gun and she just shoots the shit out of him. So after she gets all that, she goes to a pawn shop the next day and she goes in, and the and the guy who's running the pawn shop, he's like, where did you get all this stuff again, you said? She's like, oh. And her being the most suspicious bitch in the world, she's like, oh. An acquaintance ended up getting his head crushed by a truck, and I got all of his jewelry. And I'm like, who do you... Why would anyone believe... Why would you even get his jewelry if his head got... Okay, alright, fine, sure. But uh, <laughs> you don't have time to process that shit because uh, some old lady just like busts into the store and she's just like yelling at the, she's just yelling and screaming. She's like, yeah, and she slaps a bunch of shit off of the, off of the uh, glass countertop in front of the pawnbroker guy. And he's just looking all scared. <laughs> and then she just walks out and then she's just gone. <laughs> And and I'm laughing while the the hooker chick while Leah Thompson is laughing, and he's just like, no, uh, I'm not buying any of this shit. It's way too hot. Like I, you're you're suspicious. This shit is suspicious. I'm not buying any of that. So she gets all pissed off and she's about to leave, and he stops her. And he's just being all creepy. Just all sorts of like weird close-ups of his fucking fake, just nasty-ass teeth. Uh, and he's he propositions to pay her $10,000 for her beauty. And she's like, what the fuck? You want my beauty? And he's like, yeah, give me your beauty. I'm going to make a mold out of it. And uh, she's just like, okay, well, fucking whatever, yeah. Ten thousand dollars, fuck yeah! 
And uh, he takes her into the back of the store with his fucking voodoo shop, does some weird voodoo shit. She's talking a bunch of shit while he's putting this, like, weird mold over her face and it, like, zooms to his weird collection of faces. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But uh, she she goes out and she's like, yeah, sucker. And then it goes back to him and he's got a fucking coffin with his wife all like zomp while corpsed out. He's got the fucking corpse bride in his basement in her wedding dress. And he's just like, yes, soon you'll be beautiful again. Ah, but they don't have much time to dwell on that because they got a sexy montage of Leah Thompson. Hell yeah. Just trying on all the sexiest eighties clothes and dancing to all the sexiest eighties synth music. Ooh, it's so good. So, she ends up uh, going to that party, and it's really funny. She goes to the party, and it's like the same shot as the beginning, but her friend's all alone, and she turns around to to look at nobody just so the camera can see her like reaction of seeing Leah Thompson go into the fucking place. It's it's very forced, but it's it's fine because hey, she got into the she got into the party. And, uh, oh, her name is Raven, not, not Leah Thompson, the, the friend. She got into the party and Raven didn't, so fuck her. So she, she just walks in and she, the, the guy that she was, like, looking for, he's just, like, already there with a date. And she just looks at him and y- you hear some, like, weird Jaguar growl in the fucking soundtrack. And then all of a sudden he's just like, oh, yeah, me, you, oh, huh, huh, yeah. And he's, like, pointing at her, just like, yeah, come on, let's go, baby. And then, uh... They they end up meet they end up meeting they end up flirting, and uh, he's just the douchiest rich guy. He he's like oh yeah my name is my name is Price as in everyone has one, <laughs> and her her name is Sylvia Vane. Like fucking yeah, she's obsessed with being beautiful. She's vain. <laughs> so yeah, he's God and. Yeah, Price, I fucking hate. I hate him. He's he's so he makes this joke. She she goes, Oh, is that is that supposed to be some cheap sexual innuendo? That's something he says. He's like, No, it's supposed to be an expensive one. <laughs> I hate it. So anyway, uh they 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 flirt and she like slaps him and he's just like, uh what the fuck? And she's like, oh, I'm just playing hard to get. So they end up going to an elevator, which just stays open forever. They're just in the elevator having this whole ass flirty ass conversation. I, I was just like, when is this shit going to close on them? Is it going to la- like, how long are they going to, are they going to be just standing here in front of everybody? Is somebody going to run over here? Just like, Wait, hold the door. If you miss the door at that point, that's on you, man. That door has been open for 10 minutes straight. So it's four months later. There's a little time skip, and uh, they're together. And he's just like, ooh, baby, you're the girl of my dreams. You said it just like like just like you said that night. And uh, while while they're while they're together, she notices a little wrinkle on her, on her face. And she's just like, Hmm, that's weird, but it's probably nothing. And then the next scene is just like them fucking, but like, it's just like, it's just the weirdest sex scene. Cause it's him just like worming behind her. You, all you see is just like his hand, just like all over her shoulder, just like, eh, eh, uh, yeah. And then she's still just like looking at herself in the mirror, just touching her face. Just like, Oh, what is wrong with my face? So that that keeps happening. She's she's just steadily growing more and more worried and he just leaves on a business trip. He's just like, "Whatever. Hey, I'm I got to get out of here for a little bit. Take it easy. I'm gone." And she's like, "Oh yeah, no. I love you. Like, don't look at my face." She turns off a light where she was like doing her makeup. She turns off a light before she kisses him. He's like, hey, "You're acting weird." And then he just leaves. So she goes to the doctor, and the doctor's just like, I got no fucking clue what is going on with you. Your skin is aging like crazy. Like, I am sh- I'm shaken as a doctor. So he's like, think back and tell me what could have done this. And she's like, oh, shit, the pawn shop. 
So she goes over to the pawn shop and she's like, give me my fucking face back. And he's like, I can't. Like, you already, it's been four months. The ticket said four months. You're a day late. I can't do anything. And she pulls a gun on him. She's like, fucking do it. And he's like, all right, 100K and then I'll do it for you. But a cop comes in, so she has to bail out. Um, but she's just like, how the fuck am I going to get 100K? She goes back to her to her apartment, and she just starts tearing the whole place up. She's she's looking for shit to, to sell, and then also just destroying the house for no reason. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty great scene. So her boyfriend ends up showing back up. He comes back early from the business trip and he's like who the fuck are you you ugly ass bitch like get out of my place like oh my god and she just (laughs) she just shoots the shit out of him she he's about to call the police and she's like nah i'm just gonna robocop your ass she shoots that dude so many times uh and then after that she runs back to the to the pawn shop it's closed, so she breaks down the door with a trash can, and she's like, look, I got everything for you. Like, here's all of your money, and she she looks at the corpse, and the corpse looks like her now, and he's like, oh, yeah, like, I, I had to take other women's beauty to make her, like, to keep her fresh, and she's like, look, just reverse it, and he's like, yeah, I could do that, but your face is all over the news, bitch. Like, if I do that, you're going to jail, and he he has a newspaper and it's her she's just like oh fuck like they they know and then the cop shows back up and he's like oh did you hear about what happened in the news like <laughs> and the the cop's talking all sorts of shit he's like oh yeah the dumb bitch fucking uh dropped the gun at the murder scene and like didn't even her prints are already on the record like man <laughs> she's fucked as soon as she shows her face in public so then that that just seals it for her. So Cynthia just grabs the the mold of what I think is supposed to be her face. You, they all look the same. You can't really tell, but she's just all sad and she runs out and she's just like, ah, oh, fuck. And then she bumps into Raven from the beginning and drops the the mold and she's and Raven's just like, watch where you go and you old ass ugly trifling ass bitch, like just laying into her. <laughs> And then uh, she's she's just all sad because I guess her whatever the the soul of her face's beauty was in that mask. I don't really know, but uh, that's the end of the episode. Oh, I I actually forgot to even talk about the Crypt Keeper, but Crypt Keeper comes back and ends the episode. He's just like uh, he he has like some fucking jar of acme brand goo that he just like slides on his face and he says some dumb shit about uh, if looks could kill and then he looks in the he looks in the mirror and he's just like ugh. which yeah i agree dude like yes that is exactly the reaction you should have to your disgusting ass so it's the end of the show and real quick We are going to get into the comic versus the show difference uh, because we're running out of time. So we're going to do this real quick. So it actually, the comic actually starts off with her uh, taking a watch off of a passed out dude in the alley. He's just, he's just knocked out all drunk. She doesn't murder the shit out of him. She only kills one person in the comic. Um the when she goes to the pawn shop she goes immediately after getting that watch she's just like oh this watch is gonna make me rich so she goes to the pawn shop and uh he doesn't take it because the watch is fake he's he's not worried about what her means were it's just a fake ass watch so she's just all pissed off but he he comes up with the same offer uh, only he, he, but he only offers her one K he only offers her a grand because you know fifties money um, and he doesn't have a crazy voodoo shop. Well, actually, he does have a crazy voodoo shop because he still like puts the mold on her face. But there's no dead wife business. He 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 says it's strictly business between them. So, uh, she it 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 does time skip again. She ends up uh going to the party, but she doesn't like go with the guy immediately it says that she she like dates him for six months and then they get married and then after that she starts to notice her face 
and so everything's up up pretty much the same. She looks at the ticket. The ticket instead of four months, it's uh, it's for a whole year. But she does still end up coming a day late, and he's just like, "Nope, hundred k now, bitch." Ha ha. So she goes back, and instead of uh, instead of shooting the shit out of her boyfriend or her husband, she uh, she beats him to death with a statue. <laughs> she he's like he's like, "Who the fuck are you?" He grabs her, and she just grabs a statue, and just lays into him. Um. So after after that, she's just like, "Oh yeah, like." I'll go to the pawn shop tomorrow. And then as she's walking to the pawn shop, she, the, the pawn guy doesn't like show her the newspaper. She sees the newspaper on the stand. She sees her face all over the place. And she realizes that, Oh, if I get my face back, then I'm immediately going to go to prison. So that was the, those were all the differences between the comic and the show. So it's time for shriek of the week. And this week's Shriek of the Week is a special shout out to the Talkin' Trash with Ortis podcast. Uh, my buddy Ortis, who is a avid horror fan and game designer, uh, he has a podcast that you can find all over the place where he talks about all sorts of things, uh, all things horror, uh, a lot of gaming stuff, a lot of movie stuff. Every other episode, he has a story time where they break down like a, a famous killer or something. It's a really cool podcast. They have a lot of really good guests on there. And I just I just recommend that you check it out. So that is all for me, everybody. Uh, I, I thank you all so much for listening. And uh, to the people who gave me those five-star reviews on iTunes, I so, so appreciate you. That, it really, it really meant a lot to me. And uh, I hope that you guys will, I hope that you guys will do the same and you'll go to any, any sort of thing where you can give it a rating and just hit, hit up a five-star. You, you might as well, or you know what, don't even do it. Just tell a friend that you like it. Just, just... Let somebody know about the show. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. All right, everyone, that is my time. Folks, if you want to catch up with me, I am CJ Damoka all over the place. CJ D A M O C H A. You can find me on social media or Twitch, playing a lot of different games and being really bad at them. All right, folks, until next time, thank you. Take it easy. Stay scary, everybody.